is the question of what kind of diseases can chiropractors cure? Do you remember when you first came into a chiropractor's office, you, or the first time you heard about chiropractic, you thought, well, maybe they're all right for back aches or stiff necks, and then people start telling you strange things. Somebody says, well, I took my daughter to the chiropractor and he cured her menstrual cramps. And somebody else comes along and says, I had psoriasis for 17 years and it cleared up under chiropractic care. And somebody else said, yes, well, he cured my gallstones. Somebody says he cured my diabetes, heart disease, multiple sclerosis, migraine headaches, chronic constipation, ulcers, indigestion. If you sit there long enough and listen to some of these claims, you will suspect that chiropractors are claiming they can cure everything from leprosy to ingrown toenails. And as a new patient, you must ask yourself, what kind of diseases can they really cure? I thought I'd like to answer that tonight. Because the answer is very simple. No chiropractor anywhere ever cured anything. Chiropractors can't cure disease. And medical doctors can't cure disease. Anything that is ever cured is cured by the living body, not by doctors. We're in such a rush to give credit where it isn't due. When you get sick, you always want to treat the disease instead of letting your body do it. If you cut your finger, you run to the iodine bottle, you pour on iodine, you wrap it in bandage, you shoot the arm full of penicillin, the other arm gets a tetanus shot, and a week later you take off the bandage and it's all healed. Do you really think iodine and bandage and penicillin will heal a cut? If you think that, tomorrow morning get down to the butcher shop and buy yourself a steak and bring it home and cut it. Pour on some iodine, wrap it in bandage, shoot it full of whatever you want. The steak won't heal, will it? Of course not. And you say, well, now you're being ridiculous. Of course the steak won't heal because it's not alive. But that's the point. Let's stop giving credit where it isn't due. Life heals, not doctors. All the scientists in the world put together couldn't heal a blade of grass. And yet your living body, as you sit here right now, is making living flesh and blood out of the food you had for lunch today. What I want to do tonight is totally destroy your faith in doctors of all kinds, because not one of them can cure anything. And I want to give you some faith through understanding. I want to give you some confidence through common sense, through knowledge of this great, fantastic body of yours. You are the doctor. Built into you is all of the wisdom of nature, and that wisdom that the chiropractor calls the innate intelligence of life knows all there is to know about healing. No doctor can cure anything. You and you alone can heal. In fact, if your body were working right, you wouldn't have got sick in the first place. Let's discuss just how great this body of yours is. I'll give you one example, and if that one example doesn't convince you, then I'm going to quit. Let's think for a moment about the start of a new human being, the union of two little cells. Now, there's a little female egg cell about the size of a dot made by a fine-pointed pencil, so minute you can barely see it with the naked eye. That meets up with a male sperm cell that's even tinier. Well, maybe a little smarter, but smaller. Okay. Two, uh, sorry, girls. <laughs> Two little cells get together, and from this, a whole human being is going to be formed. As the one cell now, as it's united, one cell gets a little bigger and divides into two. Divides into four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. Just keeps multiplying. And then, when it looks like a little mulberry, somehow it knows to change. Remember, they all started out from one cell. They should all be the same, shouldn't they? And yet now, certain of the cells begin to change. And this little mulberry-looking mass gets a dent along one side that the scientist calls the primitive streak. That primitive streak is going to become the first organ of the human body. You know what the first organ is? Always. It fascinates me as a chiropractor to know that the first organ to develop is always the brain and the spinal cord. Now I wondered why. So I turned to the medical physiology textbooks. And Halliburton's textbook in medical physiology states, 
the brain and the spinal cord are the first to form because there's a master control system of the body that will regulate and control the function of every other system from then on. But then, as though around an invisible skeleton, with no doctors around to tell it what to do, no scientists, no PhDs, no surgeons, no pediatricians, this little speck of light knows how to form a perfect human being. And in 280 days, nature has done her job and a perfect being is born. Now, do you assume for one moment that the wisdom that designed this perfection quits when the baby is born? The baby is born may be weighing six and a half pounds and he's 20 inches long. And he's going to grow up to be six feet tall and weigh 180 pounds. And everything will grow proportionally. You think it's luck that there are two holes in the skin just where the eyes come? Or is there some planning here? How do the fingers know how long to grow? They don't just keep growing. Somehow they know there's an inner wisdom that tells them when to quit. The heart cells grow to exactly the right shape and size to form a heart. And the liver cells always stay in the liver. They never go into the eyes. So apparently the wisdom that created this body, that which the chiropractor calls the innate intelligence, the inborn wisdom of life, it's still there even after you're born. And it regulates your growth all the way until you're fully grown. But now when you're fully grown, can we now assume that nature quits? Now it's time for doctors? The wisdom that created your body is still there. In fact, if you understand this next part, you'll understand everything there is to know about health and healing. I said earlier that in order for your body to be healthy, the 25 to 30 quadrillion cells must be doing their job. That there are highly specialized cells, and if they're not doing their job, then the job won't get done. I also said that this body, when it's working right, can last 120 to 150 years. That apparently is nature's scheme of things for human beings. But the individual cells, they don't last 120 years. You know how long your cells last? If I brush my hand, I brush off millions of dead cells. And new ones grow from inside to replace them. Your body is constantly replacing its cells at the rate of about 3 billion every 60 seconds. As you sit here right now, your heart cells are dying. But don't worry about it, because as one dies, Nature makes a new one to replace it out of what you had for lunch today or breakfast this morning. It's estimated that heart cells live about 90 days, and then they die. Red blood cells last about 120 days, and then they die, and they're replaced. And by the time 14 months has gone by, all of the vital organs have been replaced. And it takes about seven years to replace the entire body, bones and all. Every seven years, you have a brand new body. Now, that means if you've been married 21 years, you're on your third wife already. Yeah? The last time I said that in a lecture, somebody said, yeah, if she's my third wife, how come she's so much like the other two? <laughs> but there is a reason for that. While the whole body is replacing itself, as far as science knows, there's one part of the body that does not get replaced. Mm -hmm. The brain and the spinal cord. Apparently, they have to last you all of your life. Now, this is interesting. The brain and the spinal cord are the first system to be developed. According to Halliburton's textbook of medical physiology, they are the master control system which regulate everything in the entire body. Now we find out they have to last you the rest of your life. Every other part of your body is replaceable, except the brain and the spinal cord. Do you think it might be a good idea to take care of your brain and spinal cord? That's all chiropractic wants you to do. We say, since every part of your body can be replaced except the brain and spinal cord, and since the brain and spinal cord, if they are working properly, will regulate the proper growth of everything else, you don't have to worry about sick organs. Medicine has failed for thousands of years because it's trying to cure sick cells. Chiropractic says, if you have sick cells in your body, let them die. Pretty soon, they're going to be replaced by new cells. Now, if the new cells come in strong and healthy, as the old ones die out, then disease passes from the picture. But if the new cells that are born are born just as sick as the old ones, then the disease goes on and on, and you'll never get well. And this is where chiropractic comes into the picture. 
We don't want to cure your sick cells. We just want to make sure that all the new cells that are born are given a fighting chance to be born healthy. Let's take a very quick look at the anatomy of this brain of ours. Because it's the most vital organ in the body, it's given special protection. Nature surrounds it by solid bone. The skull, the cranial vault. But you'll notice the brain is not totally enclosed. Did you know you have a hole in your head? Well, you really do. I can see some of you don't believe it. Let me show you. On our little demonstrator here, up on top of the spine is the skull, the base of the skull. And as I tilt it forward, you can see there's a large hole right here in the bottom. And you, too, have a large hole in the bottom of your head. Of course, it's not very scientific to say you have a hole in your head. So in science, we give that a name in Latin. It's called the foramen magnum, which means large hole. Now, through that hole, the brain extends all the way down the length of the body. But because it's just as important down here as it is up top, it, too, is surrounded by bone. Inside the bone of the spine runs this extension of the brain called the spinal cord. Millions upon millions of nerve fibers. But if the spine were just one piece, you wouldn't be able to bend or twist or turn. So old mother nature in her wisdom has taken this bone and cut it up in pieces. 24 movable segments called vertebrae. And now that spine is flexible. Let's take another look at the bones of the spine. From the pelvis or the hip bones at the bottom, the sacrum, the little triangular portion that forms the base of the spine with a little coccyx or tailbone underneath. And on top of that, the 24 movable vertebrae or parts of the spine. And inside where this flexible conduit is shown, in your body, the spinal cord connects the brain with all parts of the body by running inside the bones of the spine and in between each pair of bones, there's an opening through which nerve branches pass out. Millions upon millions of nerve fibers from the brain branch out into the other parts of the body. And when they get out here, they divide and redivide and subdivide and make a network of nerves all over the body. Each one of those nerve fibers is about 100 times thinner than a human hair. And over those nerves passes the nerve energy, the electrical energy, that keeps your body going. Every single part of your body, in order to work, needs a good nerve supply from the spine. That's the kidney. Over the kidney is the adrenal gland, the liver. They only work properly if they have a nerve supply from the spine. So does the gallbladder, the spleen, the pancreas, the reproductive organs, the eyes, the ears, the nose, the toes, the fingers, either directly or indirectly. Your body is an entire network of little chemical factories. And in order for you to be healthy, all of those little chemical factories must be working properly. And they all interrelate to each other. Now, what does all of that have to do with chiropractic? Just this. Every organ gets its nerve supply through the spine. And that's fine as long as the spine is in its proper position. We take so much for granted, sometimes we forget the beauty of nature's structure. Have you ever thought how your fingers just happen to fit your hands? They wouldn't fit the person next to you because they're custom made for you. Your eyes are exactly the right shape and size for your eye socket. Otherwise, every time you look down, you'd lose something. Everything fits. And exactly the same is true of the bones of the spine. They're so perfectly shaped that when the bones are in their proper position, the openings are exactly the right shape and size for the nerves which come through to the organs. But if something should happen to your spine, if one of those bones should become misaligned, twisted out of place, even minutely, that's what a chiropractor calls a subluxation. Let's see the damage that that can do. This is a sketch reproduced from a photograph to be found in the textbook of neurosurgery. And it shows four of the bones of the spine. You'll notice these two are lined up neatly one in front of the other. The disc in between them is a 
good shape and size, nice and even all the way through. The bones are even. 